We have so many mobile and wireless systems. So why do we need some more research there? Hmm. Well, think of developments in antenna systems, device integrations, new applications, lower latencies, autonomous cars, 5G systems. There's always something to invent, something to do. If we look, for example, the wireless communication part, well, we have to improve transmission quality. The problem there is we need way more bandwidth, lower error rate and especially way lower delay. The latency between your device and the base station is still high. This is not because the speed of the electromagnetic waves is lower for mobile communications. No, this is also almost speed of light. But due to the forward error correction, some other algorithms, we have certain latency. Then we uh, can do some more research and special modulation coding scheme with the cope with interference. We also have to look into medium access. Depending on the medium access scheme, we can have fair schemes, unfair schemes. Uh, we can react fast, uh, for example, for emergency calls, etc. We also have to look into regulations. When it comes to mobility, well, uh, do we really have mobility support? Do we really have mobility support in the internet? Do we really have location transparency? Well, there's still something to do. Maybe we have this with a mobile phone. But, for example, if we connect our computer to a fixed network at home, then a mobile network, then we travel, do we really have transparency? Do we have a certain minimum quality of service that we support? Do we have the same security? Still some more research need there. Then also device portability. Power consumption is too high for the devices. We have limited battery capacity. We also have limited computing power. Displays are an issue. Usability. And as always, and this is actually a cross-cutting topic, security. Privacy, data integrity, tracking of devices, encryption, law enforcement, all these issues they are kind of problematic, so we have to do a lot of research there. So if we talk about mobile and wireless communication system, we will use a simple reference model. You should know this reference model. Especially you should know the basics of, well, the internet communication. That means you should know TCP IP, well, data link layer, medium access control, physical layer, all these things. So what does it mean? So for the physical layer, you should be at least aware of what are the tasks of a physical layer. What does it mean to translate bits into signals? For the data link layer, you should know the meaning of medium access control. What is a packet? How do we do error detection, error correction? Network, Internet Protocol, IP, ARP, ICMP, all these protocols, transport layer at least, TCP, UDP, maybe a bit more. If you do not have a good knowledge there, please do have a look into computer network books. There are many of them. Or look up our courses about computer networks. And then for the applications, I will give you some examples for specialized applications. So we will focus here in the first chapters on the physical layer and data link layer. And then in the later chapters, I will go up to network and transport layer. So to give you an impression, so where can we do what? Well, in the physical layer, we have to talk about frequencies, frequencies, attenuation, interference, modulation. So there's a lot to do there because there we really have all these bad effects of wireless communication. We don't have them in wires, fiber optics, etc. On data link layer, we have to talk about medium access control, but also multiplexing, who can access the wireless network, who can access the medium. Well, we know that we don't need a medium such as air, but you can access the space. Network layer, we'll see, we have to talk about routing, addressing, handover between different systems, transport layers, flow control issues, 
the internet, well, uh, does not always react in an appropriate way when you use it for wireless and mobile communication. And I briefly will give some insights to new applications. So what do we want to have? In the end, we want to have something as our seamless networks. I, as I already told you, I, as a user, am not interested in technology. Well, we are, because this is why you take this course. But this is still the global goal. Do we have them today? Well, seamless communication works for so-called horizontal handover. Horizontal, that means you stay within the same technology. Within a wireless LAN on a campus, you have thousands of hotspots. Seamless communication guaranteed. No problem. Well, seamless between your hotspot and the hotspot of the coffee shop? No, not really. Seamless communication guaranteed between uh, inside a network of a network operator, cellular phone network, for example. Yes, even from one network operator to another one. Complicated, but it works. The problem is, how can you do so-called vertical handovers? Do you already have vertical seamless handovers between the wireless network of your university and the 5G network of a network operator? You can use certain applications in a seamless fashion, but you do not really have a seamless vertical handover. Seamless, that means with the same privacy settings, a, for example, encrypted voice communication without any interruption, handover from your campus network to a network operator, a 5G system, then to a 2G system, then to a PICO network, then to another wireless LAN. Try to do this, usually the connections will break or you will suffer from some problems, quality of service issues. So that's one of the goals of the 5G systems, 6G, whatever they will be, is also to provide this seamless vertical handover. So some more questions and tasks. So as I already told you, this course requires sound knowledge and fixed computer networks, layering, etc. Please refresh your knowledge. The principle of layering, etc., the Internet Protocol family should be familiar. So think of horizontal handovers. Come up with some examples. Where do you use them? So where do you really see the horizontal handovers? What about the vertical handovers? Maybe you already find some examples where they really work. What are the problems? And then finally, Yes, yes, we discussed this. The data rate of LTE is already higher than many DSL connections. So LTE already offers more than 100 megabit per second. So why doing more research? Can't we just replace all the DSL connections by LTE? And the problem is solved. Think of that.